Greetings friends. This is Survival Doc. Today I'm going to talk about something that is very personal. I'm going to talk about some of, some of my own uh, issues, some of my own health problems. Now I'm 55 years old and uh, as a 55 year old man I suffer from more uh, challenges with my health than I did when I was 20 or 30 years old. Now I'll let you know a little bit about my own personal philosophy. Um, I do not use medical doctors at all, only as a last resort. Say if I have an accident on my motorcycle and I've got broken bones and, and I'm bleeding profusely, sure take me to the uh, medical doctor to patch me up. That is what they're good for. They're good for accidents and injuries. Uh, but as far as just treating uh, chronic illnesses, uh, to me, medical doctors are nothing but pushers for the pharma pharmaceutical uh, company. Everything they do is determined by the pharmaceutical company and it's all for profit. Uh, most of the prescri prescription drugs that are prescribed are just totally useless since a lot of them cause more problems than, uh, than, than they help. Now as a dis disclaimer here, let me say that I'm not encouraging anyone to stop taking your prescription meds. And so do not stop taking any of your prescription meds because of anything that I say. Or I'm just going to explain to you what I do and then uh, I believe that my uh, listeners, watchers are mature enough to where they can make their own decisions. But uh, if, you, if you're on prescription medicine, talk to your doctor if you want to get off of it uh, or make your own decision, but don't do anything because of what I said. I will not take any responsibility for any problems that you might have uh, if you decide to take any of the advice that I give in my videos. Uh, as a 55-year-old man, one of the problems that I've had for, for some time now is, is, is prostate uh, problems, benign uh, prostate hypertrophy, or as a swollen pros prostate, it's a benign condition, it's not cancer. Swollen prostate, which makes uh, urination um, slower, slows down ur urination, makes it more difficult. Uh, in extreme cases, uh, if it, what can happen is it can actually shut down the urine flow entirely. Uh, that is a very, very bad situation, obviously. Uh, uh, if you can't urinate, not only is it very painful, but uh, if uh, urine backs up, it can cause kidney failure uh, and actually can result in death. I mean, so it is a, a serious condition. Now, I don't use medical doctors. I have not been to a medical doctor in uh, 20 years. Uh, I haven't taken any type of prescription drug um, and so far back I can't even, can't even remember, I think I took an antibiotic one time because of uh, an infection. Uh, but even last time I did go to a medical doctor, I considered it a mistake and I didn't uh, get the prescription that they gave me. I do use herbal medicines. Now one thing that I have found for my prostate is it's a product called Men's Formula. And uh, the reason I want to show this to you is because I want to talk about some of the ingredients in this formula. This has, uh, b because my intention is that it, during a um, uh, worst case scenario, during an emergency, if we're not allowed, if we can't get our uh, medical um, supplies, or if I can't get my herbal supplies. And one reason I mention this formula is because one of the ingredients in here is saw palmetto. Uh, berries. It also has pumpkin seeds. Now pumpkins are something that I can grow. Uh, saw palmetto is, is really the main ingredient and I looked into growing my own saw palmetto just so I wouldn't be dependent on buying these uh, commercial products in case I can't. Um, uh, the government's actually trying to uh, uh, prevent us from buying herbs. That's what Codex Alimentarius is about. Uh, they want to stop us from buying herbs so that they can keep us on their, sell us their, their Prescript, dangerous prescription drugs. Uh, I looked at saw palmetto, I looked at growing it myself. It grows in Florida really well and I found out that I can't really grow it in Missouri. All right, it's just the climate, it gets too cold here and I, and I just could not grow saw palmetto. If I could grow it, I couldn't, it probably wouldn't uh, produce berries and it would die, unless I protected it, it would die every winter because our winters are way too cold here. All right, so I was, I've been looking at uh, things that I could do, say if I no longer am able to buy my prostate uh, formula. Uh, uh, what are things that I can grow, or even better, what are things 
that grow naturally in my area that I might be able to harvest from the wild uh, to help me with my health condition. And I mentioned uh, the prostate formula and the prostate problems because that is something that is, that's, that's really the only health issue that I have other than uh, some knee pain due to uh, a past injuries that I've had to my knee and, and, and problems like that. Um, I've been pretty fortunate. Of course, I uh, live a healthy lifestyle. I don't drink alcohol, don't use any kind of drugs at all, not even prescription drugs. I, um, I exercise. I choose healthy foods whenever possible, but I'm, I'm not perfect. I grow my own food whenever possible. Um, I can't really afford to eat nothing but organic uh, foods because they're so expensive. So I do eat a lot of foods uh, from the grocery store. Um, when I grow my own, I grow organic and I try to produce as much of my own food as I can because it is certainly healthier and more natural. I raise my own meat uh, so I don't have to deal with antibiotics uh, and chemicals that are in the, the meats that you buy from uh, factory farms. I try to eat a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, I have, um, I get a lot of fiber, how I keep my bowels moving uh, regularly every day. I mean, I, there's some things that I do that a lot of people uh, will ignore that help me prevent diseases. So I don't have to deal with a lot of problems that, that people, a lot of people do have to deal with. And, I, and I've also just been fortunate um, not to have a lot of problems. <clears throat> But uh, a lot of you out there are on prescription drugs. And the whole reason for making this video is to ask you, what are you going to do if you can't get your prescription drugs anymore due to some type of crisis, some, kind of, uh, some type of emergency, disaster? Uh, what if you can't get your, your drugs? Well, there are a couple of things you can do. One is you can stockpile a lot of your drug. Right, but what are you going to do if you run out of your drug? Um, I think the best strategy is to not take prescription drugs as much as possible. All right, now again, I'm not telling you not to take drugs if you have a drug that you need to take. If you, if you had your thyroid gland removed and you have to take thyroid hormone, if you stop taking your thyroid hormone and you don't have a thyroid gland, you're gonna die. All right, so what I'm telling you is something that you have to just think about. You might not be able to get off of prescription drugs if, if you're in a situation like that. Uh, then, um, you know, you all, your only choice is to uh, stockpile your drugs. All right, but then you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do if your stockpile runs out? Uh, but for a lot of us, a lot of the drugs that we take are unnecessary. Uh, cholesterol drugs uh, do far more harm than good in my case. Um, I don't think anybody should be taking statins. First of all, high cholesterol is not the dangerous thing that they make you believe that it is. Uh, your cholesterol is, is necessary, I believe. The statins actually cause more harm than good. Uh, drugs like that, uh, they love to give you because when they put you on something like a high cholesterol drug or diabetes drug or a um, high blood pressure drug, it's something that they could put you on for life. And that's what the pharmaceutical companies love. They make billions of dollars. That's what they spend all their research on is producing drugs. They don't produce drugs that will cure diseases. They're not very many, there's not very much profit in that. They want to produce drugs that they can put you on and keep you on for the rest of your life. And most of these drugs are just not necessary. Uh, diabetes, like type two, type 2 diabetes, a lot of people on diabetes medicine. Uh, diabetes is a preventable disease. I'm not going to get into that today. Um, and if, if you, if you want to be lazy and just take your diabetes medicine, that's fine, but there, you could also look into ways that you could just improve your health. For one thing with diabetes type 2, lose a lot of weight, get a lot of exercise, eat right. All right, but there are a lot of things that you can do to get off of your drugs, or but my advice is to just try to stay off drugs as much as you can. Look for herbal alternatives, and of the herbal alternatives that you look at, um, prefer things that grow wild in your own area. Um, like I said, saw palmetto is something that I depend on for my prostate gland, but it grows in Florida. I can't grow it here. Um, I'm looking for wild alternatives. If I have to hit the woods, I don't think I'll ever have to leave my home and hit the woods, but you never know it could happen. And if I have to hit the woods, uh, there are a lot of herbal medicines out there that if you know about them, you can find them. Now, one thing I've talked about in this video is uh, bed straw. Uh, the reason that I 
am thinking so much about bed straw, or catchweed is another word for it, is because I have heard that it is a great uh, product, not only for, not a product, but a great herb, not only for a great uh, beverage, like a coffee substitute beverage, but I have heard that it is a great remedy for a swollen prostate. And I discovered that this bed straw grows all over my yard. I have it growing in my front yard. I have it growing around beside my garage. I've got it growing as a weed in my garden. Emerson said that a, a weed is just an herb whose benefits we don't yet understand. Um, and I've also heard people say, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've also heard people say that oftentimes the herbs that you need will, are, are the, will actually some of the weeds that are growing around you. Uh, that's sort of a mystical way to look at it. I don't know about that, but they do say there are people who believe that the herbs that you need are often the herbs that are growing around you. And I know in my case, so one thing, one reason I really looked at this bed straw is because I definitely need something for my prostate and it's growing all over the place. Not only growing in my yard, but anytime you walk out into the, um, the woods, I find it all the time. So it, it's something that grows locally here. So I'm really excited about bed straw. Now what I recommend that you do is that you learn what is, grows naturally and grows wild in your area. And the way that I approached it is I tried to identify the plants, first of all. I have a lot of good books here. Here's a good book, The Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Wildflowers. It helps you identify wildflowers. And it has just about everything, not everything, but just about everything that grows in, uh, in, in North America. It's got great pictures, uh, great descriptions to help you identify. There's all kinds, these are called field guides. Um, best way to identify an herb is to identify its flower because a lot of herbs have similar looking leaves. But if you, if you can uh, catch the herb when it's flowering or if you're watching a plant, wait for it to flower, uh, then when you find the flower, you can look it up in a field guide like this and identify the herb. Well, I recommend that what you do is you identify everything that's growing wild that you can, that grows wild in your area. Now, not all of these herbs that you identify are gonna be useful, but a lot of them will be. You'll be surprised at how many are useful. Uh, some of them make great uh, food, uh, their emergency survival food, uh, and a lot of them are great herbal medicines. But the first step is to identify, find out what's growing in your area. All right, once you identify a plant, you know what you're dealing with, then do some research and find everything that has been written on that plant. You'll be amazed, almost every flower that I have found, if you research it out, almost every type of plant that I have found, every type of herb that I've found, has some type of history as uh, uh, herbal, medicinal herbal use. Here's another book. I picked this up in the library for, they were throwing, the library was throwing this out, so I picked it up for like a quarter. Uh, Spring Flora of Missouri. The reason I show this is I live in Missouri and I think it's also helpful to get books like this that are in your area, from, from your area. The Book of Wildflowers, this is another book that I picked up in the library. Trees of Missouri, again, I live in Missouri, so I'm looking for reference books that are specific, specific to my area. Uh, trees, there are actually a lot of trees that have, I showed you a juniper tree with juniper berries on it, um, which is an herbal medicine. Uh, a lot of trees actually have medicinal value. Mushrooms of North America. Now the thing about mushrooms is there are poisonous mushrooms out there. Before you eat mushrooms though, make sure that you know uh, what you have there. And, and uh, with, with mushrooms, you might want to not, not just rely on a field guide, but you might also get some uh, expert. I'd recommend you get some expert um, advice, people who really know before you eat the mushrooms because there are poisonous mushrooms. All right, these, these, these are just some of the books in my library. I also have a lot of herbal books. I have probably 100 uh, herbal books. The herb book, and, and once you identify the plant, you can look up, this book is not really good at identifying the plant, but it does tell you what uses the plants have. And I have a lot of these 
books and uh, and one book uh, you might not find a plant in the first book that you come across uh, you might some plants um, do not have wide known uses and uh, so you might have to look keep looking uh, do some research on the internet uh, but there are a lot of good herb reference books out there some of these are older books they, they draw on knowledge from people of past generations or they draw on Indian Indian knowledge a lot of knowledge that actually has been lost but it's amazing all of the wild plants that that grow out there that do have some type of medicinal value so if you ever do have to hit the woods or if you're if you're living in the woods uh, you may have a lot of herbal knowledge, but the herbal knowledge may be of herbs that grow in China. You, know, you may be an expert on Chinese herbs. Well, you know what? You're not going to find any very many Chinese herbs uh, growing lo local if you live in North America. I recommend what you do is you get back to nature, learn uh, what grows in your area, learn to identify a, a weed. When you're walking through the woods and you see a, an herb growing there, know what it is. All right, this is something that you need to start working on now. You don't want to wait till the crap hits the fan before you start learning this knowledge. This is something that it takes time to learn, and you want to start learning it now. And there's a lot to cover, and you're not, gonna, you're not going to uh, learn all of it in a short period of time. But every little bit that you learn uh, could help you. If you just start with one plant, just go out uh, in your yard. It's amazing. Uh, the things that grow in my yard that I have identified. I've identified a lot of wild foods that I can eat as emergency foods. A lot of these wild foods are not real palatable to, palatable to me, but I found out that they're great foods to feed to my animals, so I can feed it to my animals and then uh, turn, that, turn it into high quality protein, slaughter the animals, and then I have meat to eat. Um, I just have a small property in a uh, uh, a suburb area and it is just absolutely amazing once you learn uh, how to identify these plants but every time it's just amazing how much is out there but every time I see uh, a weed growing in my on my property I don't immediately just poison it or, or, or cut it down uh, what I do is I, I allow it if it's not something I'm familiar with I allow it to continue growing I watch it try to identify it I allow it to flower because it's easier to identify it when it flowers when it flowers I'll get one of my reference books, I'll identify what it is, and almost every single time, if I, if I re once I find out what it is, if I research it out, I found out that th this thing does have some medicinal value. So what are you going to do when you can't get your drugs anymore? And what are you going to do when the government outlaws herbs and so it's not so easy to ship herbs in from uh, other states or from other, other countries? Uh, you may end up relying on the herbs that are right there in your area. So my first advice is to avoid drugs whenever possible, learn alternatives, and rather than get on prescription drugs, and most prescription drugs are out there just to make drug company profits. Okay, let's face it, most prescription drugs are not out there to help people. Most do far more harm than they do uh, benefit. All right, they're out there because drug companies make billion dollar profits. They like to develop and patent drugs that they can push you on and keep you on for the rest of your life, like high blood pressure medicines. They love uh, cholesterol drugs, makes make some billions of dollars. Try not to get on these drugs. If you, if you uh, avoid doctors, and if a doctor gives you a prescription, it doesn't mean you've got to fill it and get on that drug. You know, first of all, talk to the doctor about it. Uh, ask them if you really need to be on it, if there's something that you can do um, to prevent having to take this drug. Uh, generally, the doctor won't know anything about what you can do. I mean, d diabetes type 2 is one of the easiest things in the world to prevent, but ask your doctor what you can do for it. You'll get almost no advice. Uh, you have to do a lot of this research yourself, but try, uh, avoid doctors unless you need to. If you need to, see your doctor. Avoid drugs unless you have to have drugs, if you, and don't stop taking a drug because of anything, anything that I say. Do your own research. Um, avoid drugs. Find herbal alternatives. And of the herbal alternatives that you find, of the herbal alternatives that you find, try to find herbs that you can grow yourself so that you're not dependent on herbs shipped in from uh, far away. And try to find herbs that you can find in the wild where you live so that if you are completely cut off from your drugs and you're completely cut off from your herbs, uh, you can go out and 
find the medicines that you need in the wild. This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be pleased.